to understand that people themselves are conduits of inspiration and that I was now going to curate my life by the people and ideas that I surrounded myself with. And if you didn't fall within the context of bleeding and feeding, relativity and association, I would just let you fall away from my life or even fire you from my life. It's time to get inside your own head. Begin with the psychology behind your behaviors. Infuse it with an acute understanding of self-awareness, emotion, storytelling, body language, and more. Then look at it all through the lens of the latest neuroscience research, broken down to its most digestible form. And you've arrived. Enhanced messaging, deeper connection, heightened influence, and a greater impact on the world. Welcome to the Amplify Podcast with Renee Rodriguez. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Amplify Podcast. I am extremely excited, but also honored to have uh, my next guest here today. Dave Meltzer is somebody that I met years ago, watched him for years, met him years ago. He's one of those people you immediately connected with. And the more I got to know who he was, the more I got a chance to understand the depth of his background, was blown away. But then when you got a chance to know the man, I fell in love with who he was. So much to the point where I said, call him up out of the blue, even though we had been friends. And I said, I know we talk a lot. I know we do events, but I still want you to coach me and mentor me on some very specific areas. So he's actually one of my coaches and mentors. And so we get to, to a chance today to talk about some things that uh, have really helped me frame up and understand some really important aspects of our life. And, and I think you're going to get a lot out of this too. So with uh, uh, out further ado, uh, let me just bring you on, Dave. How are you doing? Fantastic, and I can tell you what an honor it is on my side to be able to facilitate elevating someone who is elevated in so many respects. And it's that favorite saying of mine: "There's two types of people in the world: there's humble people and those that are about to be." <laughs> yeah, the people that ask me, <laughs> the people that ask me to help them are people that in their own respect, their topics, their subject matter and expertise are far beyond where I'll ever be. But to be humble enough to say, look, I know what I do and I'm good at what I do, but there's certain things, David, that you do that I would like your help with. And the fastest way, as you know, and I know to get to where we wanna be is find people who sit in a situation by subject matter, topic or expertise that can help us accelerate where we want to be according to that subject or topic. And I think it's really important to distinguish that from the start. And so thank you. It's an honor to work with you, to be a friend of yours, an associate, but most importantly, for you to be in my community. Likewise, my friend. And so those of you who, who which if you don't know Dave, you've been living under a rock. One, he's multiple best-selling author. Probably most popular is uh, his the company that he was a CEO of and ran for many years was the company that the, the movie uh, Jerry Maguire was made after. And so there's some fun stories that we might get in there, but uh, it's uh, Dave has been at the negotiation tables and have overseen some of the biggest sports negotiations in the world. He sits on the board of many uh, organizations that you and I would all know very, very well. He was a former uh, CEO president of Samsung uh, phones and a whole list of other really cool stuff. Just Google them and you'll see all of it. So I want to jump in though, right away to this where I think your magic is, Dave, because I think that this is something that is we all say, and I think that the answers to life are found in cliches. And one of those cliches is to, you know, to really manage who you send your, you spend your time with, or, you know, you're the average of the, of the income of the people you hang around, hang around with. But when you come around you, the first thing, and this is what we all say this about you, there's never been a Dave Meltzer event that we haven't walked away meeting new people that are, are of the same cloth. And you like to use the word vibration or community or even neighborhood. So talk to us about what you mean by that. And then let's go into how we created it and how you created it. I don't think it's probably the biggest lesson I learned. A lot of people may or not, may not know who I am and please Google me, but I lost everything because of the lack of humility, because I forgot to take stock in who I was and what I wanted to become. And it was interesting People ask me, how the hell does someone that's so educated and had such business success, how do you lose over a hundred million dollars? How do you go from that high up? Someone that I'm not a football player, you know, I, I I'm the one who was helping all the players not go bankrupt. How 
how does that happen? And it was simply, I surrounded myself with the wrong people and the wrong ideas. And so I started looking at the criteria of what that actually meant when Napoleon Hill said, you're the aggregate of the five people that you spend the most time with. I went beyond what he was teaching. I said to myself, who feeds me and who bleeds me? And then determinative upon who feeds me and who bleeds me is how relative are they to me? Because for example, I'm sure your children bleed you and I'm sure we bled our parents. Well, we're so relative to them that it's a joy to be bled by your children. It just like I believe it's a joy to be bled by my mom now that she's 80. And so relativity became a criteria after I determined whether somebody was feeding me or bleeding me. And then the, the third component was association, that sometimes we're put in association with people where we have to protect ourselves, but we're, you know, at a cubby hole next to them at work, or we're both on the board of directors of a large company or organization. And so when I was dissecting how I uh, ended up bankrupt, how I ended up making such major mistakes, not just financially, I almost ended up divorced right? The, the, the greatest decision of my life to marry my dream girl. And it took me years before she didn't hate me. And then I started to back down the, the road for her to hate me again. But all of these things had to do with the frequency of vibration to understand that people themselves are conduits of ins inspiration and that I was now going to curate my life by the people and ideas that I surrounded myself with. And if you didn't fall within the context of bleeding and feeding, relativity and association, I would just let you fall away from my life or even fire you from my life. And now that it's such a blessing with so much content out there. And so it's so much easier today to fire someone from your life or even fall away from your life than it was you know, back in 2008 when I went bankrupt because some people don't even notice that you fired them or let them fall away today. But trust me, when my wife told me, you got to fire your three best friends from childhood or else I'm not going to stay married to you, they noticed. Yeah, I bet. You know, it's interesting about that. It's in this world, one, I used to say that, you know, transparency was a choice, but now transparency is not a choice anymore. It's there's there's cameras, there's recordings, there's people, it's, it's the world that we're in. And I think there's good, good and tough realities around that. But I think the other piece too, I have found a lot of peace in just the unfollow button. And you start realizing the people that, that are upsetting to you. If you're watching something and that, that algorithm is feeding you a certain piece of information to just simply unfollow them. No, nothing dramatic, nothing telling them, Hey, I told everybody, no, just that. And you realize a couple of months go by and you haven't thought about that negativity. And you start really crafting what comes into your life. Like you said, it's never been easier to really design what is feeding you because you, but you have to be proactive to do that. And so I, th I think what I'm fascinated with, with you too, Dave, is, is one, I mean, the, the comeback story is always such a beautiful one. I mean, you had hundreds of millions, you lost it, now you're back again. And the, but the other piece of it too, is the way you're back, I think is different too, from what you told me. And you're, you're, you talk a lot about this and, and people talk about community, but you live it like you live it every aspect of your life. You're living this vibration community neighborhood idea. And then there's another side too, which, you know, you hear Dave talk and he's talking about vibration and all this stuff, but you are a proficient businessman and you understand the value of your time. You understand how to manage your calendar. You are diligent in following through on promises. So like there's this beautiful business side to you, but then, the driver is there and you really truly are merging both of these these aspects. So go into when you say vibration, because you sometimes say words, that I have to go back and say, what did he say? Well, and I got to rewind it in my head and start playing it back and forth. And then sometimes two months later, I'm like, oh, that's what he meant. Like, and I'll sit there with it. So I think it's easy to hear vibration and then it go in one ear and out the other. Let's just pause in on that word. When you say vibration, what do you mean? Yeah, and it was taught to me this way, and I probably should preface more often the annoying side of being a teacher, a mentor, and a coach, which is you have to be honest, honest to yourself and others with, without taking it too seriously or being too hard on yourself. But the big annoying thing is to be repetitive. So not to be repetitive, but to be repetitive, because that's how we learn. Everything vibrates. 
<laughs> Everything on the world vibrates. My desk is vibrating right now, but it vibrates so slow I can't put my finger through it. But the earth vibrates, minerals vibrate the slowest, then plants, animals, and then humans, and then sound, and then light, and then thought. And that which vibrates the fastest is the truth. The truth vibrates the fastest. Now, here's what's interesting. Now, this is quantum physics you're really talking about here. I mean, you're really diving into a quantum it is. realm here. Okay. It is. Well, here's the interesting thing that I learned. You can only be aware of that which vibrates equal to or less than you. And so the higher we elevate our vibration, either as an individual or as a collective consciousness, a neighborhood, a community, a group of people, an organization, a baseball team, whatever it may be, we can actually elevate our awareness as the collective as well. And life gets really easy when we elevate our awareness because you know things like when to buy or sell. You know whether or not to go left or right. This is all a matter of enlightenment and awareness, which is directly relative to your vibration. And so if you're interfering with your higher self, your highest vibration, if you are surrounding yourself with the wrong exercise, the wrong nutrition, the wrong people, the wrong ideas, and that's why I have daily practices to elevate my frequency. I plateau and grow every day, including my sleep. I use my sleep to elevate my frequency by having an unwinding routine to make sure that I don't have the negative interference while eight hours a day, I'm recovering and accessing new information to utilize or transcend into the next day. Everything I do is mathematical in the world, but relative to an inspiration, to an omniscient, all-powerful inspiration that I believe we all are connected with. So we got we got we got to break that down. We got to slow back. We got a lot of big words and a lot of a lot of quantum physics and a lot of uh, there's just a lot going on there. So let's just go back to this. You're elevating your frequency, okay? So give me like phase one of of elevating my frequency. What's like? I've never heard that concept before. What's one simple step, and then we'll go to step two, then we'll go to the more advanced. But what's the basic way of elevating frequency? Breathing. Yeah, and so you know on a practical level how important breathing is. Now, one thing we have to understand about the idea of breathing or being at ease is that I believe, and I cannot prove it, it's just the best option belief uh, according to what and how I want to live my life. I believe that we're all unified. I believe in something bigger than me, an omniscient, all-powerful source, God, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Joseph Smith, whatever you want to define it as. I believe in something bigger than me that loves me, protects me, and promotes me. And it has more than enough of everything for everyone. So my paradigm shift is I'm not trying to go get this. I'm not trying to go achieve this. What I'm doing is trying to figure out each day, how am I going to stop interfering with it? How am I going to stop interfering with this omniscient, all-powerful energy that I'm part of? And so in order to do so, breathing is the easiest way to elevate our awareness, our frequency, our vibration, to use more of what we already have, what we're already given. So when you hear a term like I am, and you put it in front of something that you think you want more of, or you think you don't have, we now actually shift a paradigm and say, I am healthy. What am I doing to interfere with it? I am wealthy. What am I doing to interfere with it? I am worthy. What am I doing to interfere with it? I am happy. What am I doing to interfere with it? And when we start to understand with, this is faith, Renee, then it can be religious faith. It can be theoretical. It could be philosophical. It could be spiritual faith. But I believe that this omniscient, all-powerful, protecting, promoting, and loving energy is always around me and part of me. I just interfere with it. Now I can pragmatically utilize my time each day in order to minimize the bad behavior. Bad behavior defined as that which interferes with my better self, my higher frequency, my higher vibration, and utilize that time in good behavior. Good behavior defined as behavior that's aligned with where I want to be or better. And so I try to use a very simple framework. And the number one thing you can do 
is breathe. Go, go on YouTube, find Wim Hof, find any breathing expert, breathe through your nose, out through your mouth, practice breathing yourself. Don't use anyone's strategies or philosophies, but I promise you when we are at ease, then we can utilize that energy, that frequency, that vibration to our greatest good, our better self and pursue our potential. I'm, I'm going through this. The, the big crux of what I'm hearing here is there's an underlying belief system that really drives this that underlying paradigm for you is good is always coming my way. So that versus I have to go find it, which is like, I think what a lot of us think, the pursuit of something, the pursuit of happiness, right? The pursuit of goals and versus saying, no, it's already coming my way. What am I doing to get in the way of it? And I, I literally, as you're saying that, I started asking myself, what if I were to shift that perspective for a minute and go, I'm already this way. Like I'm already, I'm already healthy. What am I stop? What am I, what's stopping me? I said, oh, wow. Yeah, I did eat that stupid thing yesterday. I did do this. I could have worked out a little bit harder. I could have done that that last rep. You start realizing that okay, if I, I mean, it's a very different way of thinking, but it's a, it's a. What I love about it is that it's 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 um, abundant number one, but it's also accountable. And that to me is, I think, probably one of my favorite things is you're taking full accountability for it. It's already coming my way. I'm the one messing it up, and so then I can't blame anyone else. It, it, you I love nail that. It. You nailed it because there's three levels to thinking of that and accountability is what did I do to be responsible? What did I do to attract it? Or what did I do to participate in the perception? The interesting thing about this idea is that you still can reconcile each day because the, the immediate thing is, okay, Dave, you don't have any goals. Okay, Dave, you're going to sit at home high on your mom's couch, sick and broke, dreaming about what you want, just making sure you don't interfere in your dreams with what, no, no, no. See, I'm a ferocious, a ferocious Buddha. And that means that I know that I live within 24 hours a day, which I'm guaranteed. I'm guaranteed 24 hours every single day of my life except for the last day of my life. I'll be cheated minutes, maybe seconds if I'm lucky, or maybe hours, but only one day will I be cheated. This promise of 24 hours, only one day. So therefore, the way that I make this very pragmatic, and you know this side of me, the guy who knows money and can negotiate and work within an abundant philosophy, I, I master time because time is the only dependent variable of all human beings that can be quantified easily. Everybody gets the clock and everybody now can find a clock if you don't own one. And so when you start breaking down your time with this philosophy saying, what am I gonna do, say, think, feel, and believe today in a divine direction of where I wanna be, a trajectory, a goal that I, I wanna be somewhere in the future or better, because now I'm not limiting myself. So I wanna make over, a million dollars today, or I want to make over a million dollars this year, or I want to empower over a billion people in my lifetime to be happy. But the realm of today is, so if that's true, if I want to empower over a billion people in my lifetime to be happy, then according to the circumstances of today, the interest rates, the weather, my travel schedule, all of these different things that go on, according to what's reality in this 24 hours today, how best can I clear what's interfering with my future objective of empowering by learning from the past, which is being accountable. What did I do to be responsible, re attracted, and of course, to participate in the perception, and what am I supposed to learn from it? So the only thing that limits my future then is the meaning I give the past, or my self image into the future. Those are the only two that limits myself beyond how do I use my time today to be productive, accessible, and gracious. And I have some further tips in the time that help people to accelerate, aggregate, and compound the outcomes that they want or better. Uh, let's hear them because I, I I wanna I wanna I wanna button this one up and then I'm gonna go to a completely left field question for you. So what are those tips? Well, the first one is you have to, to be committed to doing stuff every day because in physics, quantum physics and metaphysics, what you do say, think and feel and believe every single day gives you an exponentiality that you can't get by doing it every once in a while. So for me, understanding my non-negotiables, even knowing that two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday, 
in productivity, accessibility, and gratitude. So for me, I first say, what are my non-negotiables? Non-negotiables are defined as what am I committed to do every single day, seven days a week? What am, and that's counterintuitive and counter human nature, by the way, because we hate doing stuff every single day and not having any variance. So for me, the number one thing I'm committed to is my sleep. So I am committed to seven hours minimum of sleep in order to recover and access information that I can utilize tomorrow. So number one, seven hours of sleep time committed that leaves 17 hours each day that's left over. Now I take three hours of the leftover 17 hours and I make more non-negotiables, minimum amount of time with my health, minimum amount of time with my family, minimum amount of time with my finance, minimum amount of time studying time, minimum amount of time on faith, minimum amount of time studying who I should be relative to today as well, the people and ideas I wanna be around. And I divide that up a minimum amount of time every day, seven days a week to equal about three hours, not contiguous hours, but you know, two minutes here with my daughter, 10 minutes here with my wife, whatever it may be. Now, here's the interesting thing. Seven hours of sleep, 17 hours of awake time, only three hours of my wake time are committed every single day to do the same things, to prioritize my non-negotiables. But yet 90% of my success in exponentiality will come from the commitment to do that three hours and seven hours of sleep. Only 10% will come from the 14 hours of variant behaviors that I'm not committed to doing that provide me lessons, mistakes, and joy but it also provides me the inspiration to be disciplined to make it through the three hours of awake time of committed family, finance, health, fitness, faith, et cetera, that give me 90%. So without the variant behavior, no human being would be able to do even the littlest thing every single day. If you didn't have the opportunity to have non-negotiables and variant behavior, you won't even be able to say thank you every day, which only takes 0.1 seconds and it's free and has exponential outcomes that you can't even imagine. If you didn't have variant behavior, you wouldn't be able to do it. Human nature would feel punished so far that you would you literally would create so much resistance, you wouldn't do it. Mm. Well, I hope if you're listening to this, you're going to listen to this multiple times, because I know I am. There's a lot of depth and thinking and philosophy that goes into this. But I, I think it's it, the powerful pieces I'm hearing out of this one is just the reality that there's a measurable 24 hours. Your commitment is seven of those hours is to sleep, leaves you 17 left over. Three of those next hours are, are, are split between your health, your family, finances, learning, growth, and faith. Now that leaves 15 hours for the variant behaviors and the tasks and things we have to do. But what I'm hearing too is just, is take a very pragmatic approach to time. And I think as Benjamin Franklin, he said, do ye value life? If you value life then value time, because time is the stuff that life is made of. And that's the only measurement of life in, in some cases is, is time. And so what is time? Time is actually the way we spend our life. And now when we think about life, it becomes more finite because we think, oh, we get more time, more time, more time, Well, we don't have more life. And so how are we spending our life versus, you know, just even our time? So I want to ask you a left field question, because I want to get into something a little bit, a little more concrete for some of our, con for some of our, our, uh, other sort of left brain listeners here. What, tell me about either your, your favorite or your largest or the craziest deal in sports you've ever negotiated that you can talk about. Yeah, sure. It probably was my first deal when I started running Lee Steinberg Sports Entertainment. So I had no idea, and this is public now, that Lee Steinberg uh, suffers from a disease called alcoholism. And I had no idea when I got hired uh, how difficult and challenged Lee was with this disease. So here I am coming in my first weeks to run the most notable sports agency in the world. Warren Moon, the Hall of Fame quarterback, is my partner. I had taken the shoes of Jeff Morad, who now was the president of the Arizona Diamondbacks and part owner, who eventually would own the, uh, the Padres, my favorite team. And within the first week, my lead agent tells me, hey, Lee's not feeling well. He's not going to be here for the next month. Now, I later found out that he's not going to be here for the next month because he was in rehab. 
<laughs> now, I said, well, that's okay. You know, I've run bigger businesses than this before. Not as notable, but I've run really big businesses in, in my early 20s all the way through now in my mid 30s. I said, well, what deal do I need to help with? He says, well, Franklin Financials put together $900 million to buy the Rams. And we need you to lead because Lee's not going to be able to do this. And it was Georgia Frontieri. John Shaw was the president of the Rams. And it's right here when I'm going bankrupt, by the way, because it's 2008. And so now I'm dealing with trying to verify. And, and I know so much more about venture. That's Lee Steinberg hired me, not because I'm a great sports agent, but he hired me because I was an expert at two things that no other lawyers involved in sports that he knew were. One is venture capital. I'd raise hundreds of millions of dollars. And two is technology. Well, anyway, I get on the phone and I'm terrified. And I get on the phone with Lee and I'm wise enough in humility to say, Lee, I'm over my skis. I, I This is not something I'm capable of doing. What What can I do? And he said, well, talk to Jeff Morad see if he can help you. Now, Jeff is now president of the Diamondbacks. He's not very available. And two, he's also, he left for a reason, right? He knows what challenges I was going to have. So Lee then says to me, let me just simplify it. And this is the genius of Lee Steinberg. And I will tell you, if Lee Steinberg did not have a disease called alcoholism, he probably would be the president of the United States, if not a senator or a governor, because that's how brilliant and kind this man is. Here's his wisdom. David, don't negotiate to the last penny. Always be fair. And whatever you do, don't do business with dicks. <laughs> and that was the advice that I got on a $900 million deal to purchase the Rams that was falling apart financially because of 2008 and the financial crisis that we were in. And I will tell you that to simplify it and give me confidence uh, led me through to do that deal and to understand how business would work at a high level. And that simplification also helped me to recover from my own bankruptcy, uh, which was only six months down the road and several other things in my life. In fact, my next book, the title of the book is Don't Do Business with Dicks. <laughs> I love it. You know, what's so fun is that in my 30 years of doing this, I've got a chance to work with some pretty cool people. And and par for the course, my friend, the ones that have done the biggest things have sometimes the simplest philosophies. And when I say simple, it doesn't mean it's easy, but it's distilled down over time. It's It's withstood the test of time. When you remove all the fluff, you come back to some really basic fundamental truths that become guidelines by which you do you do business and i love hearing that is you know is it fair and you know don't nickel and dime don't negotiate the last penny and just don't do business with bad people dicks as you said i love that so i i know that uh, we're coming towards the end here but i i want to say number one this is there's so much more that, that we can cover and that's one of the reasons i invited you to come speak at ampcon uh, on august 16th uh, this is in 2024 in Dallas is because I wanted to to expose you in, in these conversations to some of the audience that comes there. And I think you and I are going to have amazing conversation there. And so if you're watching this, please come come to Amcon and see Dave and meet Dave in person because we're also going to be doing a VIP celebrity uh, dinner that night. Uh, Dave, do you want to explain how that works? And because I think that's that's one of the fun things we can do. I, I know I gave you a time press and, and I'm hoping that I can come back and you can come on my shows as well because I want to talk about AmpCon and the VIP dinner component as well. And so just as a history, I always take people out when I speak and when I come to cities to do interviews or to do business. And because the community was growing so big, either people felt left out when they didn't get an invitation or two, I could be hired for a lot of money to speak. And sometimes the dinners were more expensive than I got paid to speak. And so someone came up with the idea, hey, why don't, you know, we all can come, the, the celebrities, athletes, entertainers, billionaires, millionaires, and entrepreneurs, but let us pitch in. And then other people like, hey, I'd pay to come. You, you got Meta World Peace and Renee Rodriguez and Clinton Sparks and Tim Story. These guys are coming to dinner. I'll pay you to come. I'm like, okay, you buy dinner. 
And then another guy's like, well, I'll buy dinner if I can come. And then it ended up that people started to pay to come to these dinners around everything I do. So I do two or three of these a week around my business because I literally couldn't afford to pay for everybody to come to dinner. And then too many people offered to pay for dinner. So we now have this community of people that get in. And even though they pay, there's always a guarantee that it will be a profit center for you. So I mitigate all risk for anyone that stretches their budget to show up, but it's turned into a huge blessing because we now, people that can't come to AmpCon may just want to come to the dinner to surround themselves with the right people and the right ideas. And I will tell you what, for everyone here uh, in the community, I want to make sure that uh, not only you know personally that I want to provide value, but anyone that emails me, david at dmelter.com, I will sign my book, send it to you, pay for shipping in the book. I also will give you a special discount to come to the VIP dinner. So please email me, anyone in, in Renee's community, uh, we would love to have you there. And I will also guarantee the value. So even for with the discount, without a discount, it's going to be a profit center for you. And beyond the event, it's just the cherry on top to be able to hang out and really ask the questions. Because people talk, you hear it once, and then you forget it, or you have questions. When else can you hang out with all the speakers that are at AmpCon and all the people and be able to ask further questions and said, hey, what's this frequency thing mean? Or what do you mean by student of your calendar? Or can I just get another signed copy of your book? All of those things happen at these dinners. And I cannot wait for AmpCon August 16th. Please join Renee and I and all of our friends. I guarantee, uh, like I said, it'll be a profit center for you. It's an investment uh, that will give you exponential return. I love it. It's it, every single one I've been to. I've I've met some of my closest friends through you, and some of the people that I trust the most through you. And these are these are people that I'm going to take to the grave for the rest of my life. And in fact, you guys called me from the car the other day, which was it was just good to see Clinton and Jeff and everybody else there. So, all that being said, you know the this is going to be part of uh, AmpCon. It will be separate but part all the same thing. And those are VIP members of AmpCon are going to get even a special discount as well. So. This is just about getting the right people together. And just like what even this podcast is for me, pulling together my friends, my network, people that I believe in, like Dave, that can bring value to you and can help you think differently. And so I, I hope this stretched your thinking a little bit. I hope this made you question words and, and made you sit back and go, okay, well, what is the frequency of my house? What's the, what's the vibration of my friends? What neighborhood am I spending time in? Not like the, don't think neighborhood is your house neighbors. Of who's around you is your neighborhood, that, that vibration and that frequency and where you spend your time. Is it, are they helping you? Like, are they feeding you or bleeding? You? I mean, there's so many great tidbits that came out of this. I hope that you sit with it and I hope you think with it. Don't just let it go in one ear and out the other. This is meant to be listened to on repeat and go back and ask questions, engage, reach out, get the book. His book's fantastic. You, you just, once you get around Dave, you'll start realizing why he is who he is and why so many people love and adore him. And so I need to add one thing. I hate to interrupt the big clothes, but everybody, this idea of neighborhood or community, what I have come down and we talk about the simplicity of it, what I've learned from this, and, and I did set out to do it. I've tried to build a community of people that want to help each other and know people that can help each other. We all have gifts. We're, we all have strengths that are beyond our imagination and weaknesses that aren't in the right place. And we can all fit together to suit each other. But here's the biggest benefit, especially with the total addressable community that exists. A community of people that want to help each other and know people that can help each other, which is what Renee is building with AmpCon and I'm trying to build as his friend, associate, mentor, etc. They buy from each other and sell for each other for life. Imagine that. Thousands of people buying from you and selling for you and vice versa for life. Can you imagine a faster way to abundance, to a world of more than enough of everything for everyone? That's the gift of community, of neighborhood, that I want everyone out there that is resonating with what I say, join us. Everyone that thinks this is horseshit and it doesn't resonate with you, go tell all your friends that it's horseshit and it doesn't resonate because you'll keep all those people out. We won't have to worry about vetting. We'll just attract the people that it resonates with. Amen to that. It's so true. Thank you, Dave. You're you're a blessing in my life and so many others. I hope you've 
gotten value out of this. Obviously, if you love it, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all the things put on your calendar, August 16th in Dallas, Texas. Go to our website, meetradio.com forward slash AmpCon. You'll see all the links in the bio. Dave's link's going to be in the bio. Follow him on, on, on Instagram because he goes live every day. I mean, there's, please, follow, you will fall in love with him just like I did. And uh, there's nothing but value coming uh, from his direction. And so with all that being said, Dave, thank you so much for being on here and sharing your heart, soul, and wisdom with us here today. First of many, I love you all. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this time with us. If the experience resonated with you, follow us on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or AmplifyMyLife.com. Share it with anyone else who's ready to amplify their lives. And remember to let our hearts speak in sequence. For more from Renee Rodriguez, visit MeetRenee.com.